as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying to ourselves, in faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, that we are born to eternal life. Amen. My name is Gary Malay. A lot of you know me. It's been so good this morning to see a lot of familiar faces. Some of you might not know me, uh, but I look forward to doing that sometime. My family and I joined this church many, many years ago. I professed to be a Christian when I came to this church. But truth be told, it was more of following a family custom and tradition that I called myself a Christian. Now, don't get me wrong, I was raised in a Christian home. Mom was my Sunday school teacher from the time I was old enough to remember. And I knew who Jesus was. And I knew that faith in him would bring eternal life. But I didn't develop much of a relationship with him. The gospel stories were just stories that got told at bedtime and just kind of made me feel good when uh, I was feeling down. I rarely gave serious thought to what real faith was. As for my own faith, it was the size of a mustard seed. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I'm here for two reasons today. First, to confess my sins and ask forgiveness from you. You see, I became addicted to drugs and alcohol at a young age. Despite my best efforts, I found I was completely powerless against this disease. I put together many hopeful periods of sobriety, but I could never seem to be rid of the ghosts that would haunt me. I had always been successful at anything I put my mind to, so why not now? Why couldn't I have the same kind of results imposing my will on this addiction as I've had imposing my will on other areas of my life. I had everything to gain and so much to lose if I didn't quit using drugs. I wanted to be rid of this addiction with all that I am, but I found that I was doing the same thing over and over and over. But I always expected it to be different tomorrow. Tomorrow will be different. And it was different. It was different in that it got worse. And I became more desperate to support my drug habit. I sank so low that I began to steal from this church. And I betrayed the trust and the friendship of many of you. All because addiction had become my master. I told myself I would return what I had taken before anyone would notice and that tomorrow would be different. But I only ended up taking more and more, and the guilt and the shame on top of the overpowering desire to use more and more drugs was like an unstoppable locomotive. And there seemed to be only one way out. After all, wouldn't this world be a better place without me in it? So I thought. God agreed. He agreed that this world would be a better place without me in it, doing the things that I was doing. So he took me out of it, but not in the way that I thought, or not in the way that you might think. I remember in Isaiah reading, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, and neither are my ways your ways. And I'm here to tell you, I can't think of a truer statement. Because what I had in mind was hopelessness and despair and self-pity, fear of everything. I have fought and fought on my own for years and I just couldn't do it anymore. I had seemingly lost everything that I loved. So what was the use anyway? There's no hope for me. And then God showed up. It was October the, 20, or October the 14th, 2011. I didn't recognize him at first because he was dressed as a policeman. And he placed me under arrest for spawning stolen property. It was not the first time that I had been arrested for stealing to support my addiction. And I was sentenced this time to two years in the Florida State Prison. I cannot describe
strike of fear and the despair of laying in my cell in the Volusia County Jail waiting to be transported to prison. But even more was the shame of knowing what I had done and the insanity of my disease. I hated what I was doing. And I hated my life. But I was powerless to stop or control it. Paul wrote the book of Romans, chapter 7, and it starts in the 18th verse. He wrote, I know that nothing good lives in me, that is in my human nature. For even though the desire to do, to do good is in me, I am not able to do it. I don't do the good that I want to do, instead I do the evil that I don't want to do. If I do not want to, if I do what I don't want to do, this means that I am no longer the one who does it. Instead, it is the sin that lives within me. Mm -hmm. So there I was, laying in the Bush County Jail, waiting to be transported to prison. I had been to twelve treatment centers, twelve treatment centers since the age of sixteen. I had suffered sexual abuse at the age of ten, and I was sure that I was worthless, and I had no reason to believe that I would ever be rid of this addiction. I had tried and failed so many times. I just could not muster the will to fight for even one more day. I was completely devastated and defeated in mind, body, and spirit, and I just couldn't bear the thought of going on with life anymore. So I stood at the crossroads, and I sense this question would be whispered in my soul. 